Amanda Sauceda never imagined 2016 would leave her homeless. I was crying. It's devastating. You don't expect this to happen within a day, you know, like it just happened all of a sudden. I wasn't even gone for 30 minutes and it happened. She went to work this morning and was called by police telling her that her home was on fire. And they're trying to put the fire out. It's not easy with this wind and that is the issue. It was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. We're here on the roof of one of the homes that is just feet away from that fire. From this view, you can see just how large that fire is and how close it is to the homes in this neighborhood. Buying a used car can be just like opening Pandora's box. A Brownsville woman found that out the hard way. The only way you can figure out what's actually going on under the hood is to get a professional to take a look. And this is where he was hiding, underneath the sink here, where he told us that he curled up inside of a ball, got all the way to the corner here, and put some debris in there to hide himself. Behind me, look at all of those vehicles that are stalled. Now, we've been out here for a while. We've seen multiple vehicles getting stuck in this high water. All afternoon, it has been pouring down rain, and it doesn't seem like it's stopping anytime soon. You can see these people are still trying to drive through here even though they see those stalled vehicles. Schuster says the next winter crop should be in the fields by next month. That's if Mother Nature is kind to farmers. Officer Hernandez says that if you're getting ready to go out on a day of shopping, there's three steps that you should follow. First being take. That means take your cell phones, take your purses, anything you don't want left in the car, make sure to take it in with you when you get ready to head into the store. The next step is you're going to want to make sure you hide all of your stuff. So go ahead and hide all the stuff you already bought so when you head back into the store, nobody's able to see what you have in your car. And that's it. Locking your car is the last step. So you've taken all your personal items, you've hidden everything you don't want to be seen, and now you can get ready to head back into the store to finish your Christmas shopping. Yeah, the school district tells us they've recently been receiving reports of these phony phone calls by parents, and they want to get the word out before more people fall victim. It's been a great day at the beach and here in Port Isabel, where we are right now, just at the base of the causeway. And as we head into the weekend, the weather should be terrific. Just a couple of things to think about. We're watching across the causeway now for signs of fog. Hasn't been any yet this week because the wind has been too strong for any to form. And right now, I don't see it. Visibility is down just a little bit, but you might keep an eye out for that if you're coming out here late tonight or early tomorrow morning. Greg Sharp says he had 56 beehives just like this one from the second incident. Now he's only down to eight. He says this is how he makes a living. With President Obama's statement coming this morning, we spoke with a local store owner to see how this could possibly affect the valley. The family of six is now without a home after a fire ripped through their house. You can see what's left behind. This house is located in the 300 block of Atkins Street in Ed Couch. This body was found off the exit ramp of FM 511. We saw investigators going up and down this exit ramp through the field taking pictures. PD not releasing much information. And we put in a call to Mercedes PD about a major crash that closed part of the expressway in Mercedes last night. It happened near mile two. A medical helicopter had to land on the roadway to take at least one person to the hospital. We're told three different vehicles were involved in the crash. When I saw them, like they were on the, on the second floor and the windows breaking and everything, I said, man, everything I worked for, everything I've been through to get what I have, it's just like going, I'm seeing everything just go. Tonight, help is finally here. It just makes you think that there's so many great people out there and I guess like how you say faith in humanity is restored with people like this. This pump was brought in by a man from Harlingen. The road to Herrera's house is part of a county easement. We called Precinct 4 today. They tell us Herrera's cesspool is moving up on the list. Keep an eye on the progress. I got dressed and came out here. He went back in the water to try to save the second person. Once I got close to him, I, could, I, I, could, I, I did have some eye contact with him, telling him, hey, hold on, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. But once we got, when I got close enough, I guess he just gave out, he went under. A photo lies in the Milagro room at the Basilica of Our Lady of San Juan del Valle, a plea for a miracle. We've lit some candles for her, for, her, you know, for God to light her way back to us. Naomi's aunt, Enedina Sanchez, tells us she's touched to see they're not alone in the search for Naomi. The last few months have left her family waiting by the phone, praying for Naomi's return. I can't give up on her. 
I cannot give up on her. We cannot give up on her because every child needs to come home. Sanchez is asking for one thing. This Christmas, have us in your mind. Say, say a prayer. She needs to come home. It's a popular place to go for winter Texans, Mexico. We watched as folks went across the Progreso Bridge this afternoon. Knowing that the Zika virus has been found in Mexico, we asked winter Texans if they are worried. Questions are being raised as to how this wall will actually be built. You can see Gran Heno already has a wall. It ends right here. Residents in Gran Heno tell us that's where illegal immigrants are coming through. The wall was built nearly a decade ago. There was a big uproar. Gerardo Mata can tell you stories of the town's fight to stop it. People didn't want to have their, their properties uh, taken from them and used as a, as a border wall. Mata says the fence built with gaps is a waste of taxpayer money. He tells me the wall Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump wants to build, if elected, will be a waste of money too. I was also pregnant when I came in the United States. And uh, he born here, my second son. His name is Amin. Cuckoo mm -hmm. Armasu is preparing lunch for her newborn son, Amen. She arrived at La Posada last year from Ethiopia. Admasu tells us it took her 25 days to reach the Rio Grande Valley. From Ethiopia, Dubai, and from Dubai, Brazil, from du Brazil, in Mexico, from Mexico, here in United States. Admasu is seeking political asylum. He says business is down some 20 percent, 50 cancellations in recent days. It's not looking, <laughs> it's not looking good for next month. Over at the SPI jetties at Isla Blanca Park, Phil Mackey is getting back from spearfishing. Band goes around, and as you dive, you increase tension ah, okay. and release. He says it was a good day. He caught a couple grouper. He took a gamble this morning coming in from McAllen. Martin D. Young explains the moment his sister called to tell him what happened early this morning. That the house exploded. D. Young lives a few houses down from his sister and brother-in-law in Donna. He says he ran down to the house to check on them. The pilot light went out on the hot water heater and uh, he went out to light it and uh, apparently the gas got up in the ceiling and when he went to light the heater it exploded. They took him away in the ambulance. He's burnt pretty bad. He says his sister and brother-in-law spend half of the year in Michigan and the other half of the year here in the Valley. They just arrived in the RGV on Wednesday. DeYoung says they had everything checked out. You don't light it if you smell gas and apparently he didn't smell gas because it went up. Many others like Lipto are rushing to get back to check on their winter homes. The winter Texans who are here now are not just worried about their own homes. They're also helping out those who aren't here just yet. We love coming down here. We love this park. This is just like a big family. We want to do what we can do to help. Shortly after the storm, the park managers contacted all the homeowners, but not everyone is able to return. When this is done, we will lose probably six residents, elderly residents that probably will not rebuild or come back. Burns tells us others are opting to come later. Despite the damages done, he's optimistic about the park's future. We are going to rebuild this park. Uh, it's just going to take time. Gonzalez wants some of these potholes patched up and this road fixed that's leading up to her home, as well as this tall grass that's on this abandoned home next to her. She's saying that people are using it as an illegal dump site. In the meantime, traffic's moving better here. Let's go back to the studio for Alan Shoemaker and another update on the traffic, Alan. To do this, they will be working with the Texas Department of Public Safety as part of their failure to appear or pay program. If you have an unpaid traffic find and need to get your license renewed, there are a couple things you'll need to keep in mind. You won't be able to pay your fine at the DMV. Instead, they'll point you in the right direction, but you may find that the citation is a little bit bigger than you remember. Martinez says she called 911 and was told to evacuate. Dispatchers told her to tell her neighbors to do the same. Brownsville Fire Chief Carlos Elizondo says they believe lightning is to blame. The understanding from the occupants that live there, they did hear a, a boom, so we're, we're only speculating that it could have been lightning. Uh, with the weather the way it is now, uh, it's pretty 
pretty for sure that that's what, what initiated. Chief Elizondo says it is typical to get these kind of calls. Hopefully it doesn't happen again, but this is usually common with this type of weather. There's a lot of lightning strikes right now because of the weather. He says it's best to stay inside and be vigilant in this type of weather. Martinez says most of the items in her home are damaged. I mean, it's getting clogged now because of all the hard water that's in the line. No matter how hard they clean, the marks keep coming back. The water flowing through the Lopez home is causing concern. Israel Lopez and his wife, Yadera, use bottles of water for drinking, cooking, and brushing their teeth. They're questioning their water quality harder today than a decade ago. Israel says his son is getting sick more these days. It'll go away. And then guess what? It'll come back in a, in a week or two. He'll be the same way. He'll have a fever, a pain in his stomach. I'll take him back and the doctor will say, yeah, he's got a, another bacterial infection. The water lines carrying well water are old. Minerals from the well water will build up, causing it to change color. Stuff eventually slowly builds up there. It's not anything dramatic. Luis Anzaldua spent the day cutting the grass around his family's final resting place. I came to check my parents' uh, gravesite, see how it's doing, and I noticed the grass is way too high. So uh, I decided to come and, you know, cut it down, take care of it. The small community of Granjano was pounded with heavy rainfall nearly two weeks ago. The damage at the cemetery is evident. Tall grass, broken tombstones, and broken tree limbs thrown around. We also found fruit in some of these brush piles, and Vargas says that plays a key factor in bringing rodents to the alleyway. Edward Rodriguez makes signs for a living. He uses different flatbed trailers to get them around. They came multiple times just to try to take that one lock off. The suspects did not succeed. They actually came three times within an hour and a half. Finally, they were able to break the lock. They actually hooked up the trailer to their truck and tried to take off. Rodriguez was prepared. Because I had it chained, to uh, one of our security bars here, it just, they didn't get but two inches. All this was going on during the day with a highway in front of them with multiple cars going through there. First responders from across the valley gathering to remember the first responders who died 15 years ago today, each with a name and a face of a firefighter around their neck. They climbed the stairs of the Chase Tower six times, 110 stories. And this is why we climbed, because they climbed. Many of these Valley firefighters were just children at the time. Adrian Garcia's family was hopeful they would find him alive. His sister Mandy Ochoa was one of the people helping search for him. She received the news this morning. Our family's just glad we have closure now. Adrian was Ochoa's youngest brother. We've been here since it happened, haven't left. De Leon and her neighbor, Adalberto Quesada, say they both had to pay out of pocket for their repairs. Now that we're trying to get it, our property repaired and also the neighbors repaired, we can't because the, the, the person that was driving didn't have insurance. So how are we going to, what are our options? They put up boards on the wall in the room her two sons share. Flores installed surveillance cameras a while back after hearing about robberies in the neighborhood. Now she's glad to have the footage of the crash. When I heard the impact of the car, my reaction was to jump out of my bed and I said, my kids, my kids. I thought that they had killed my kids. One of her sons that was asleep when the crash occurred describes what happened. When I opened my eyes, I just see bricks flying all over the place. Flores says the same thing happened a few years back to a neighbor's house. He says people speed down their street often. My initial thoughts were about the safety and the welfare of my brother because I can even jump over from my bed to his bed because of all the stuff I was there in between. Both he and his brother walked away with minor injuries. Sweat, a salute, and the ring of a bell is how they'll remember the fallen this year and for many more to come. In McAllen, Leslie Aguilar, Channel 5 News this weekend. Dozens of people young and old lining up, all looking to share in this store's prosperous history. Who knows, maybe I have the luck, right? And I will share it with all my family.
Town & Country is not just any store here in the Valley. It's produced not only one, but dozens of winners and has an entire wall to prove it. I want to say it's really popular because we get a, a large number of winners. We have a whole wall over there, a bunch of jackpots. I know recently they won about a million on like a $20 scratch off. I mean, that was cool. News of the store's opportunity even reached Cantu all the way in Austin. She's here today hoping this store is her lucky break. My son told me about it. He said, Mom, go buy your ticket and maybe, who knows, maybe you win. I said, maybe I will. So that's why I'm here. With over $900 million on the line and a store notorious for being so lucky, even I'm trying my luck. Reporting in McAllen, Stephen Sadabia, Channel 5 News, this weekend.